Hey, Papper people. Your favorite thick sleep tech here, Jason. I'm very thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Now, I've had a lot of requests to do a video on Inspire. If you don't know what Inspire is, Inspire is supposed to be a, an option for the treatment of sleep apnea. While you're asleep, Inspire simply sends a gentle pulse to the motor nerve that controls your tongue, moving it out of the way. It's very gentle and designed to move the tongue forward without disturbing your sleep. It's nothing that hurts. It just lets you know, hey, it's on. Now I happen to know a little bit about Inspire. I've done a couple titrations for Inspire. So I'm not gonna call myself an expert by any means, but, uh, but I am still going to offer my opinion on it. So take what you hear from me with a grain of salt. I say this for everything I say. Listen to what I say, I consider it, but um, also seek out other sources for this information as I don't wanna be the only like end all be all for this. I'm no like guru on this. Now I'm just gonna be upfront with you. I do not like the Inspire. I'm not a fan of it at all. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not a big fan of it from several different points of view. So the first point of view I'm not really a big fan of is the effectiveness of it. And I say that with air quotes. I don't like how they say that this is effective. Now, if you look at the research studies of how Inspire became FDA approved, if you look at what is considered a success, a success isn't taking an apnea hypopnea index from 40 down to sub five. Now, why do I pick below five as an apnea hypopnea index? Because that is what is considered a diagnosable number. Anything above an apnea hypopnea index of five is diagnosable. So to me, if you're gonna have something that is a cure or a treatment, a successful treatment of sleep apnea, you at least have to drop it below that five apnea hypopnea index threshold. Now, what is an apnea hypopnea index? It's a number of complete breathing cessations that are obstructive in nature or hypopneas, which are also obstructive in nature, that occur per hour of sleep. So if you have five events per hour, that is a five AHI. So is this fair of me to say? Is it fair of me to say that it needs to be below five? I think so, because if we're gonna diagnose people above five, then any treatment that is deemed successful should drop you below five. It seems reasonable to me. Um, apparently it's not, um, but I, this is something I don't think a lot of people know. I think they figure that if their apnea is being treated on any level, then it is treated. I don't think so. If I have high blood pressure, which by the way I do, and it has me at, I'm at you know 160 over 90, and I take blood pressure medication and it drops me to 155 or even 150 over 80, I'm still high, though there is a result. I mean, that's, that's a significant drop, but it doesn't mean I have a good blood pressure number. I'm looking at the Inspire in the exact same way. So here, here's a good example. Someone has an apnea hypopnea index of 40 and it drops them in half. Now they have an apnea hypopnea index of 20. That's not a good number. Like in no world is that an acceptable number, but yet that'll be deemed as a successful use of Inspire. From the FDA website, make special note of this. The people who could use Inspire do not have a complete blockage of the airway. So of those that they cherry picked for success, half of them were considered successful because they had a reduction of 50% or more of their AHI and less than 20 events per hour. Look at this from the journal, some European journal, I don't even know what it is. This gets them at best to an AHI waking up 10 times per hour of sleep and that's a success, please. So roughly 500 people tried, 120 people failed to fall within that cherry picked threshold. And most of these that are deemed successes still have an apnea hypopnea index of 10 or more. So weak. Uh, to me, this is totally unacceptable and it's actually quite misleading. I'm going to link to the research papers that I can find in the description box down below. I might be having some of the details slightly off, so I apologize for that. But in general, they don't have to be below five AHI to be deemed successful. This is the same problem I have with oral appliances. It can do a crap job. It can, yeah, slightly decrease your number, but ultimately it does a crap job. So the other reason I don't like Inspire is, well, I mean, one, it's not, it doesn't really work. That, that's kind of a big one. Here's another big reason why I don't like or don't care for Inspire. It's a surgical option. Surgical options I typically don't like. Okay, so here's how it works. You have an implant up around your upper nipple region, and then this has a lead wire that attaches to the diaphragm, so it can tell like when you're trying to take a breath. Now there's another wire that comes up to your hypoglossal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve is what controls your tongue. So if your hypoglossal nerve fires, your tongue is gonna get tense or move around or whatever. So this works by, okay, you're breathing, it detects your breathing, it sends a signal up to your tongue to give it a little 
tensile strength has your muscle contract. So now if you're going to have an apnea because your tongue is falling back into your airway, this will send a signal to it. It'll tense up your tongue and your tongue in theory will not fall back into your airway. Now, hopefully you see a couple problems with this. The first problem is your obstructive apnea has to be because your tongue falls back into your airway. If there's any other reason for your apnea, Inspire is not gonna work. Now this is where the plot thickens and Inspire looks even worse. To be qualified for getting Inspire and for the study, you had to have a procedure done known as a DICE. It is a drug-induced sleep endoscopy. They pretty much knock your sweet little ass out and see where the obstruction is coming from. So they already know that the obstruction is being caused by the tongue. They have already accounted for this in all of their studies. Boo Inspire. Boo. Now the other problem I have with this is, yeah, it's surgical. You have this implant and now you have a battery that's in there. So you have this expensive surgery, this expensive device, this invasive device. Sure, it's a two hour surgery and probably a quick recovery time. Still not a fan. This battery, you're gonna have to go back into it and change it in about 10 to 11 years is what they have on their website for something that's really not gonna work. I don't like it. Now here's the other thing I don't really like about it. In the sleep lab, I have experience in titrating a couple of these. Not a lot, I know, two. Now what's happened in both of them is that people are really uncomfortable with the feeling, the sensation of the electricity. Every time you breathe in, you get a little like zzz, little buzz. Anyone who's ever done anything like a TENS unit, they say it's like a very low level TENS unit. They can feel like a buzzing, a kind of pins and needle feeling. And it's something that's potentially gonna keep you awake. Now also keep in mind that this is a, this is a, a I'm gonna call it voltage, that has to be titrated. How much current is running up in there? Because it's gonna require a specific amount of current to keep your tongue out of the way from falling back into your airway. Now if you have to shock the absolute hell out of yourself every time you breathe in. It's nothing that hurts. It just lets you know, hey, this is tongue. To keep your tongue nice and taut, that's not really a good solution for me, especially when a win is dropping your AHI just in half. Not good enough for me. And I also don't think it's good enough for you. And this is not even considering things like RIRAs, respiratory effort related arousals, which are similar to a hypopnea, but have a lesser SpO2 or a blood oxygen desaturation threshold that they have to meet. So all in all, really not a fan of Inspire. Hopefully this resolves some of your questions with it. To me, CPAP is just a much, much better option. Am I some CPAP fanboy? Yeah, I guess I kind of am. And the reason I'm a fanboy is because it works. Do I like it? Not really, but it works. It's non-surgical. I just put it on at night. I don't have to really worry about it other than that. I don't have to worry about a little shock. I know that I'm getting good therapy. I know that I'm sleeping well. I can look at my data. I can see that I'm sleeping well. I can see that my breathing is regulated throughout the night. To me, it's just a much better option long-term. However, that said, I know people have their own opinions and if you just hate CPAP, don't use CPAP. Just heed my warnings. Do your due diligence. Make sure you fully understand it. If you have questions, ask them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear them. I'll answer everything that I can as the best of the, my ability. Shameless plug time. If you want professional help with me, check out my website, AXG Sleep Diagnostics. We do these wonderful things called PAP therapy data analysis. I get down and dirty with your data, show you everything you didn't even know you wanted to know within Oscar. All this stuff, it can be so confusing. I will break it down for you. Usually there's only a few things wrong with your sleep and CPAP. Glorious use of CPAP is within your reach with just a few minor tweaks. Now here's where I turn this over to you. If you have had an Inspire implant, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your experience from it. And I would love to know what your testing results are after you've had the procedure done. What are your results like? How are you sleeping? Has your daytime sleepiness resolved? Has your snoring resolved? I would love to hear all this stuff from you. If you think this video was crap, let me know. I'd love to hear it. If you're a goose, give me a thumbs down. All other people, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. And if I need to do a follow-up video to this one, I certainly will. Hopefully I didn't leave out too much. Thanks for watching, bye. Everyone's too embarrassed to say it, your mask stinks really bad. Get some Maskbrite at maskbrite.com or Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy. To Ray Troutman, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, and Mona Swearingen. And thank you to my other level Patreon supporters, as well as my YouTube members. Thank <laughs> you.